I know what you're thinking. Did he fire seven shots or only six? Well, to tell you the truth, in all this excitement, I kind of lost track myself. But being that this is a 357 Magnum, one of the most powerful handguns in the world, it will blow your head clean off. You gotta ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you punk? All right. Hello, everybody. Harry Callahan here with a public service announcement. You see, now that everybody's running around with plastic wonder knives, it's time to update the revolver. And I may have loved my Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum, but six shots weren't enough for today's scumbags. That's why I have upgraded to this Taylor Special Edition 3-inch, 7-shot 357 Magnum Ruger GP100. It's got all the classic lines that I like with the eloquent trigger pull and the seven shot capability with old school federal 125 grain semi jacketed hollow points. I promise it'll get the job done. So being that it's the 85th anniversary upcoming of the 357 Magnum and the 35th anniversary of the Ruger GP100. I thought you guys might want to take an intricate look at this Tavo Special Edition product number 1782. It'll give you the ballistics you need from the three inch barrel that offer also offers the CCW carry needs that you have. This isn't your grandpa's two inch magnum that merely creates a bunch of blast and oxidation and doesn't deliver the ballistics needed for your one shot stop man stopping power. In double action, it's smooth all the way through. And soon I'll be putting in my kit from Reinvet's M Carbo. But already, after some dry firing, this Ruger GP100 has an exquisite trigger that I can stack as I take my final aim and finish through. The stackability is something that certain competitors don't quite have modern era and in single action it breaks clean as you take those special shots when someone's standing by a river so I highly recommend the Ruger GP100 and I do think it is a viable option for today's CCW needs I'll roll in some footage in my more modern cowboy attire as I put it through the paces so you can see what it is truly capable of. This was merely the second time I fired the GP100. You see, I started out a little slow for my DeSantis thumb brake holster because it has a little more cant and being put behind the hip, I needed to get used to it. Quite frankly, the exquisite leather needed a little bit of breaking in. But as I go on, you see that I'm getting used to the trigger, going against two targets, 
and then three. Eventually, you'll see me timing out reloads, both with HKS seven shot speed loaders, speed strips, eight shot quick strips, and my favorite, the New York reload. So I guarantee you, even with those guys with the Block 19s or Berettas and their large magazine capacities in today's modern world. You won't feel under gun when you have the seventh shot capability of this Magnum and a good 45 to back it up. I'm Harry Callahan and please enjoy this video as we give the exquisite breakdown of the Taylor Special Edition 3 and 7 shot Ruger GP100. Thank you for watching it. Stay tuned. So I wanted to share with you what uh, all the boys in blues have known for a very long time. 125 grain semi-jacketed hollow point is like a lightning bolt when it hits somebody. It's been known as the magic bullet. The quickest one shot stops. The most man stopping power. Now, 357 Magnum was indeed built on the 158 grain. And I still like that for all my backup ammo. I even like it for the last two or three in the chamber of these seven shots. But the first four or five, nothing will stop a man up close from trying to kill you. That 125 grain semi-jacketed hull point it goes 1,440 feet per second out of a four inch barrel and just about 1,400 out of this three inch barrel. The two inch barrel is a huge reduction. Even more so these 1.87 inch barrels. But you see a three inch barrel like this will get the job done right quick. I'll show you all that information that we have so the three inch will give you the ballistics that you need in your CCW needs to keep the scumbags away. That loud flash and bang will get them scattering like cockroaches. And if you do need a fire and hit one of them in the ribs, don't worry, it'll make a big splash and the fibs factor will be much higher in this. Even in the early days of the Wonder Nines, they learned that the 9 BPLE that simulated the 357 Magnum load was known as a good man stopper. Even that 357 SIG, trying to get near the ballistics, every agency has been very happy with it. Now I want to talk to you about the Ruger. I love my Smith & Wesson Model 29. But in 357 Magnums, unlike Yankee Marshall, there are indeed reasons why the Ruger GP100 is even stronger than the 686 that was beefed up from the early days of the Model 19s and 66s and what have you. All my compatriots... Once we switched to the 125 grain, they merely couldn't handle a steady diet. They had problems with the bottom of their forcing cones and things rattling loose. So both Smith and Wesson 
made the frame bigger to the 686 and the GP100 is even slightly bigger and a slightly bigger cylinder, even though they both will fit in most holsters. But if you're going to be shooting 125 grains, the GP100 is going to win. There's nearly more metal here. And even if you disagree with that being why it's stronger, there's three other reasons. Number one most important are the three lockup points. Not only do you have back of the cylinder and the bottom, like almost any revolver ever, but you have this third extremely strong lockup point in the front of the cylinder latch. That means very little play and a very, very strong lockup. Number two, if you're someone like me that likes to clean up that trigger by doing a lot of dry firing, the Ruger will hold up longer because it has taller and perhaps even thicker, but definitely taller teeth, cylinder teeth, which grind down with dry firing. The Ruger is so strong that they themselves say, go ahead and dry fire it without snap caps. It'll hold up. This is a gun that will hold up generation to generation. I've heard these Block 19s are pretty popular because they're reliable and they last forever. I've seen them on the hips of the rookies. The revolver. Equivalent is the Ruger GP100. This thing will last forever and ever. And the third reason is the angle of the forcing cone isn't quite as steep. So you're not going to get that burning out and metal shaving off and flying out the barrel that you might do with something else. Now I'm not saying I'm going to throw away my Smith & Wessons. But when you want the seven shot and you're using 125 to 686 plus is great. But you want something that's going to last and last a lifetime and something you could hand down. The Ruger GP100 is what you want. So. Until next time, this has your, been your public service announcement. I'm Harry Callahan. Stay safe. Watch your six. Thank you for watching.